There is something about Tristan that is really remarkable if you experience it. it. It is the key to the 20th century. It is the key to what music has been done, what has happened to us in the 20th century. And Tristan speaks to everybody. There is no role more complicated in opera than Isolde because Isolde must show every emotion. She shows passion, she shows anger, she shows rage, she shows jealousy. All of these things are there in Isolde. There's not a lot of acting that one can do. One must do it in the, really in the bel canto method with the voice. You've got to know what the Isolde feels when she's doing it. The same thing is true with Tristan. The third act of Tristan is the most difficult single act in opera for, for the tenor. Tristan demands the most psychological development, the most thing, because what, what happens in the third act? Basically what happens is that Tristan psychoanalyzes himself. The orchestra plays his unconscious. And that's why the orchestra becomes, I always think of it as a, as a, as a barely controlled beast. Annalena Pershing is our new Isolde. She is really, uh, I found her very exciting. I didn't know anything about her. I went to Birmingham where the Welsh National Opera was playing Tristan and she literally in the very first scene almost exploded on the stage. She was dramatic, she was exciting, vocally she was stunning in what she did and I immediately realized that she was the person I wanted in Seattle. I knew Clifton Forbes of course is Tristan and I think that there's no one in the world singing Tristan better than he is. Margaret Jane Ray started off as a soprano but in the last four or five years, she has realized that the best roles for her are those that lie between soprano and mezzo. And uh, actually, Brangena is the classic one. Greer Grimsley, of course, was a great Corvinal in 1998. And of course, he's done all of our, so much of our Wagner since, including the Votans. And he was natural for me to bring in this because there is no Corvinal in the world better. Stefan Milling, who is King Mark, when I heard him sing King Mark on the stage in Copenhagen, I went immediately, in the, as soon as the opera was over, and asked him to come and sing Fasselt and Hunding, as well as the Gurnemans for us. And I'm, I've told Stefan I was going to bring him back for King Mark, and I'm really happy he's coming back to do it. Asher is our principal guest conductor. Asher is a great Wagnerian. Armin Jordan had a powerful statement to make in 1998. Asher will be completely different, and his statement will be memorable. It's hard to choose a favorite moment in an opera, which is really one of the two, my, my two favorite operas of all time. But I think my favorite moment has always been the beginning of Act Two, when Isolde makes the decision to extinguish the torch. And she sings to Brangena uh, about how she must join with Tristan. There's a kind of ecstasy in this singing and this moment that is, to me, has always been utterly extraordinary. If one has never seen Tristan before, there are all sorts of reasons to go to it. First of all, the music is wonderful to hear. You don't have to know all the stuff about it that I could tell you to enjoy Tristan. And after all, audiences went to Tristan in great numbers before the titles ever existed, before they knew what the words meant, before they had any idea. Tristan, Tristan has always been a popular opera of Wagner's because it, the music is just so extraordinary. Join me this summer as Seattle Opera presents one of the greatest operas ever composed. Richard Wagner's Tristan und Isolde.